In this video, we're going to cover the latest Star Citizen Alpha 3.20's latest patch, as well as CIG's new perspective on Starfield after it's been released, and what's happening with server meshing. Let's talk. In regards to this latest update pertaining to 3.20, it's for Wave 4 testers, and there was only one update under the Core Tech category. They reverted the active ping keybind before they switched it over to tab, only when you're in FPS mode which makes absolutely no sense to me because that keybind should always be global. So if they were changing it for FPS, they should have changed it for ships as well. So they reverted it back because most likely because the player base did not like it and it just made things more confusing. If Star Citizen isn't difficult enough, or at least for new players anyways, right? Under bug fixes, they fixed an issue where the Miss Halsey calls in for ATC. And if all the docking ports are full, it will assign a hangar, which is incorrect because the Hall C cannot land in the hangar if it has cargo. So I'm glad that he made that fix. There was, there's also a bug fix pertaining to variants of missiles whereby some of them are not firing. So that's good to hear. There was an issue pertaining to master modes dual where there's a player limit one exceeded error persistent even when you switch game modes. So that's good to hear. Some UI elements on the player visor lags behind when the player character moves making it difficult to aim so that's a good fix they also fix an issue where the player character can only sell one cargo type at the jump town kiosk and anything else extra is not visible on the kiosk so this is a good fix they fix an issue where when you use the shift key when interacting with a ladder it will cause the player character to stall indefinitely the grim hex hospital elevator does not have atmosphere when moving from floor to floor the gun rush game mode does not display the chat lobby and this one is pertaining to the snake pit in arena commander checkpoints have a poor trigger area and it does not match the hologram in addition to this they have four client crash fixes as well as five server crash fixes and they fix multiple server memory leaks so if you haven't had a chance make sure to go into the ptu and test out this latest 320 patch before we move forward i'd like the new people to know that we're doing a giveaway for the month of September, this time is the Aurora MR. In order to participate, all you have to do is be subscribed and leave a comment in any video between the month of September. Let's move on. Up next is a leaked email from Aaron Roberts. And what they found in the email was that Aaron Roberts is recognizing the fact that now that Starfield has been released, they can understand that their tech is significantly more superior as in terms of being able to fly through atmosphere, being able to fully explore planets. Starfield does not allow you to do those things. And there are loading screens throughout the game. And in Star Citizen, once you load in once, that's it. You can go anywhere and do whatever you want to do at any given time. So essentially what he's saying is that this is a good opportunity for them to capitalize on a bunch of new players coming in from Starfield over to Star Citizen, especially after they finish playing the game they can expect a lot of new players coming in so what they want to do is is to have a higher quality 320 and a higher quality 321 patch to improve the player experience i think this is a good move more on leaks there's talks about a zeus m2 ship the zeus is the very first ship that had a quantum drive according to the lore so according to the leaks zeus mark 2 might be something that's going straight to flyable in citizen console that's going to be something interesting to see more on leaks the fury lx will be getting three additional skins in addition to this the drake cutter and the drake corsair may be getting some new skins as well and most importantly we got some new information pertaining to server meshing in the 319 and 318 postmortem. Here's what it says. Going forward, we'll finalize and use the new cloud test launcher to adequately test the game shards at scale. This tool will simulate player behavior and allow the QA and the engineers to connect multiple modified game clients to the shards. By utilizing cloud computing resources, effective stress testing can be conducted, which will help identify and address issues related to heavily loaded servers before moving to live so they're making some great improvements in, in regards to their testing capability so now it continues and says the team responsible for ps has now moved on to static server meshing and are embracing a transformation approach to the new project unlike pes this foundational technology can be integrated into the code base gradually 
Avoiding a destructive Big Bang approach, parts of the server mesh and tech are already available to the game team for testing capabilities with their game features. Combined with a cloud test launcher, this game approach to aim to facilitate a smoother integration process for static server meshing. So to hear this, it's really good news from my perspective. They are in a position where they're, they moved on from PES and now they're moved on to static server meshing and they have the necessary tools to allow them to test, not to only test, but to test at scale. This way we can expect maybe a smoother implementation, at least on the initial ones. Hopefully we get this sooner than later. I'm hoping that we'll get some sort of static server meshing at the end of this year, but if not early next year, you guys already know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.